51 in verse 17 said, My sacrifice, the sacrifice acceptable to God, is a broken spirit, a broken and a contract heart, broken down with sorrow for sin, and humbly and fairly penned. Such, O oh God, you will not despise. So as I begin to study this some years ago, I realized something about this word broken. The word broken in the actual Hebrew literally means this. It means to break into pieces, to break in, or to break down, to rend violently. And rend simply means to tear, to tear violently. To be broken is to be maimed. To be crippled. <laughs> to cause to break out. Or to bring to birth. So then he said to me, he started talking to me about this brokenness. And as he was talking to me, it was amazing to me what he was showing me. Because as he started showing it to me, I said, God, what are you saying? And he told me what he was saying. And this is what he told me. He said, many times we face these challenges on our journey of salvation. And then he said that we are not comfortable with being broken. <laughs> or we don't understand the process of being broken. So naturally we associate brokenness with pain. And while while being broken involves some pain and some pressure, the pain and the pressure produces beauty in the brokenness. Mm. When something is broken, there is a whole, there's a whole type of treasure out there called antiques. And people pay a lot of money for antiques. Mm -hmm. But let me show you something about antiques. 
They usually have cracks. Yeah. They're usually chipped. Some kind of flaw. Come on, there's something usually broken. But people pay all this money for a broken thing. Because it's old. Uh oh. Mm. It has stood the test of time. It has some kind of value attached to it because it's been there a long time. Come on now. Hallelujah. Some people will pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars for a book they can't see. All right. <laughs> Just to say they got it. Because the pages and the ink in the book is faded now. But the book was from, and I'm just using this as an example, the book was from 19, from 1777. Oh. And they'll pay for that book just to say, I got a book that was from 1777. All right. They can't see it. They don't know what it's about. Come on. Hallelujah. The name of the book that faded off. All right. But, we'll, but, but somebody will go and Buy it because of its value. And God say, in order to get where I'm going to take you, you got to be broke. Amen. You can't afford to not be. A butterfly only lives 10 days. Yes. Did you catch that? The butterfly only lives but 10 days. But when we see it, come on now. When we see the butterfly, we marvel at its beauty. But it's a short-lived beauty. But that butterfly has to cocoon itself. <coughs> oh, God. And the cocooning process it's usually a month or so. And all of a sudden, you see that cocoon and it's going to break it open. And that butterfly comes out. And he lives for 10 to 15 days and he dies. God asking a question. Are you willing to break? So I can give you that value that's inside of my God. And then he said, Again. <laughs> he said here, he said that Psalms 51 and 17, it reminds us of a prophetic picture of revealing the beauty of being broken or contract. This process is a divine invitation. See, we don't understand that. When we go through a trial, it's a divine invitation. I'm being invited into something. I'm being invited into a new place. But God has to break what I'm familiar with. God has to break my support. Because we all got artificial support systems that we use so we don't have to go into the new. And we say, God, I'm not, I'm not ready for the new year. I'm, I'm, I'm God. I just got. I, I had. I've had this car for 15 years, and and I'm not ready to get a new one yet because it's proven itself to me. And God is telling you, time is telling you, your car telling you, you need to get a new one. But we're afraid to step out because watch this here. We're used to things being dependable. And God be telling you, I need you to look at this problem from a different angle. I need you to see this from a different side. But because you've always seen it from that side, you scared to see. You scared to shift your perspective because I'm comfortable with seeing it from this side. <laughs> Amen. Because if I see it from another side, I'm vulnerable. Ah, your bullshit. But vulnerability is what it's going to have to take to get to what God wants us to be. You can't get what God wants you to be still holding on to what was. You got to let go. When God freed the children of Israel, 
They were free in their geographical location. They were free in what they could see. But they were not free in their mind. They were still a prisoner to Egypt in their mind. They were still tangled up in their mind. They were free in every place they could go in the promised land. It didn't remind them of Egypt. But every time they got caught in a place where God was calling them to change, first thing out of their mouth is, I want to go back yes. to Egypt. Oh my God. Wait, 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 wait. My God. I want to go back to Egypt. God done brought me out of Egypt. But you're trying to go back to Egypt. But I'm trying to get back into there. Because Egypt is familiar. It's my support system. Mm. I know the Pharaoh going to beat me. Mm. But at least I won't be uncomfortable. But the truth of the matter is. They was uncomfortable. But they had conditioned their mind. To normalize the uncomfortability. And so many times, God is trying to break us so He can get us to where we keep saying, God, I'm ready for that change. God, I want that miracle. God, I want that breakthrough. But then when God goes to break it, no, God, I want to go back. I want to go back. I want to go back. Because I'm not ready for how get a I'm not ready for what you got to give me. I don't want to pay the price mm -hmm. to be the anti. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I want to be broke. But the Bible is saying that Paul likened in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul likened the work of the Lord. He said that some gonna build with wood, some gonna build with hay, some gonna build uh, with stubble. But then he said, but when the Lord come, and let me help you out, he's gonna talk about when the Lord come again. He's talking about when the Lord come to take inventory of your life now. Will what you're doing stand up to the fire? And a lot of times we sit and we say, when Jesus come back, when Jesus come back, when Jesus come back, and that's our excuse for everything. Mm. But God say, what about now? What about right now? I ain't got to worry about that because you know Jesus, when he come back, he going to. No, he want to fix it right now. When Jesus taught the disciples to pray, he didn't tell them, you know, you pray my kingdom <laughs> When I come back to take you to my kingdom, he say, thy kingdom come. Come where? Where was coming at? He didn't say nobody coming back. He said it was coming. He gave the church a commission to bring heaven here. You heard about you want to go somewhere. You might not like it where you're going because you ain't never experienced it. All right, now. <laughs> you can't go. Well, come on now. Right. Some Christians gonna be sad when they go to heaven because we can't sit in church. <laughs> oh, I, I, I don't do all that singing. I don't do all that praising. But you really want to go to heaven? I mean, really, you really want to go? But we're not understanding. That where it is that we holler about going, we're not ready to go. Listen here. I got a news flash for some of y'all today. The real deep sex in the church. You don't even qualify for heaven. <laughs> oh my God. Amen. Everybody ain't going. You don't qualify. You don't even qualify for heaven. You're not even holy and 
You're not even ready to go there. But I hear the Lord say that if we will allow God to break us, we are already, I'm, I'm ready for my new season. I'm ready for my new power. I'm ready for my new day. But I understand that in order to get my new season, in order to get my new day, I'm going to have to pay. It's going to be a sacrifice that I got to make. The only currency that God understands is sacrifice. Sacrifice. Everybody holler my God is a God of faith. The faith is the only curse. Baby, listen here. Let me help you real quick. You can't really have faith until you're willing to give something up. I got faith, but I ain't going to never turn that loose. I got faith, but I never let that go. Well, then you don't have no faith. Everybody, I always want to quote that scripture. Take up your cross and follow him. <laughs> I just read that. <laughs> well, let me help you real quick. Jesus was not telling you, because this is what people think. People think that taking up the cross means being willing to go through trial. That's not what he said. That's not what he meant. He was telling the disciples, in order to do this, you got to be all in. All right now. You're going to have to be all in. It's going to have to be all or nothing. The truth of the matter is, none of us are wholehearted Christians. None of us. Amen. Why we sitting up here, oh God, I would go, I would die. Listen. Nah, baby. Listen. Stop lying. Stop lying. Just go ahead and stop lying. Some of y'all won't even die for your neighbor. Tell me you gonna die for the Lord. Alright. <laughs> you can't die for God. How you gonna die for God and you won't die for Pastor? Alright now. No, you're gonna kill me first. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? It's time for the church to get to a place where we can be real. Because we not dressed up so much. Somebody asks you how you doing. And you give them the, the spiritual answer. When you know you ain't really feeling that good. Alright. Ain't nothing wrong with saying I don't feel good today. Come on now. But we got the lie and say oh I am blessed. But you don't feel that way though. That ain't what they asking you. They're asking you, how are you doing? Not your state of being. That's right. Blessed is the state of being. It's not how I'm doing. Because truth be told, yeah, I'm blessed. But it don't feel good right now. State of being. <laughs> blessed is my position. It's not how I'm doing. Paul said that he was content in whatever state that he was in. Paul didn't say he liked every state he was in. All right. <laughs> I'm <just> saying. <laughs> now we done got this thing so twisted. Somebody called Brother Rodney. Brother Rodney, how you doing? Oh, I'm blessed. <laughs> you know what I do with me? Rodney don't see me do it. When people come out my house and tell me I'm blessed, I hang up the phone on them. I don't even continue the conversation. Because you can't even be real. But then you got the nerve to go on social media. Oh, I'm so depressed. But you just got on the phone with your brother and crying. Telling everybody, telling me that you blessed. All right. But now you done got on social media and you telling everybody that you depressed. All right now. You lying. We done got, listen here, we have gotten used to what I call conditional life. Uh, all right. Oh, that thing really hurt me. Oh, you 
you know, I ain't gonna even speak that on myself. Mm -hmm. But then not hold on, wait now. Mm -hmm. You can't say, you can't tell nobody that it hurts you. And now the enemy done, you gotta open door to the spirit of the root of bitterness. Cause you won't tell the truth. Yes. <laughs> you won't even tell the truth. You don't want to be hot. Ah, no because we have gotten the spirit of pride in the church. But we don't call it that. We call it faith. But really it's pride. Because I don't want nobody to know my weakness. I don't want nobody to know my shortcomings. So I'm just going to lie and call it pride. And call it faith. Oh, I ain't claiming that. My leg sure hurt, but I ain't claiming it. Well, if you ain't claiming it, what you doing at the ER? People don't come on here. All right. Only sick people go to the ER. I sure ain't claiming that, honey. Mm. But I'm going to the doctor. Amen. No, no, let me help you real quick. You claiming it. That's why you going to get seen about it. That's right. I'm just trying to help the saints come to a place of realness. All right. Don't be sitting up there lying. Right. And one of my favorite lies we love to tell in church is, I don't cuss. <laughs> my God. Now, there's some people that don't cuss at all. Mm. But the main ones that be saying they don't cuss. You're the ones that cuss. Oh, honey, I don't cuss. <laughs> I say other words. Uh -uh. Like I used to tell Rod, if you saying shillelaghs and you really mean the other word, God's seeing it how it is. He ain't seeing what you're saying. All right, All right now. You can pull the world over my eyes, but you can't God. Because what did he say? He said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth going to do what? It's going to tell me the truth. We don't understand that in order to get the new, we got to be real about the now. Yeah. Yes. Ain't no use in me telling you one thing when God knows it's another. Come on now. And we, but you know, we done did, we done got so used to putting on airs for people that we can't even tell the truth in our prayer closets. All right now. Come on here. People don't even really realize what Psalms 51. See, the background of Psalms 51 is David is reflecting on Bathsheba. David is reflecting on when he got caught in adultery. And David is sitting back saying, it should have been me. But God had mercy on me. But now watch this here. In 1 Samuel, David is encountered with the prophet. And the prophet named and comes and tells David a story. I'm not going to tell you the story you ought to read. It. That'll give you something to read the Bible for. <laughs> Go home and read that story. But he goes and he tells a story. And David gets like some of us church folk. He gets indignant and orders the death of another man. But then Nathan turned around and say, but the man is you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, but the man is you. When the last time you let God tell you the man is you? We love to talk about we repent. But do we really? Repentance is not me coming to Pastor Nita saying, Pastor Nita, Apostle Nita, I know I hurt your feelings and I'm sorry. And then next week I go right back. Do the same thing. And say the same thing that I said. Now watch this here. The flesh get real clever. He don't say the same thing the same way. Just do it a different way. The same thing. But you said you were sorry. But you have no intentions on changing your behavior. When we repent, we change our mind toward the thing. 
Uh-oh. And we agree with God. God, your word said that a contract and a broken spirit you will not despise. In Isaiah 66, we're not going to read it, but in Isaiah 66, Isaiah echoes this. You know, in Isaiah 66 and verse 2, it says what God is looking for. And everybody loved that scripture in John 4, 24. The Father seeketh such. Worship him that worship him in spirit and in truth. And half of us still alive. But we quote John 4, 24. But we can't come to God and be real. What would you do if Jesus came and caught you at home? And the lies that you profess in church. Ain't the life you live at home. Some of us got a, we got a dial pad. We come in here. And he by a sick cop. Whoosh, I need to be a hole. And we at home, and we ain't at home, and we ain't spoken damn song. And we come in here, and we got an interpretation of tongues. We got a message in tongues. And we don't speak in nobody's tongues at home. But we have been taught in the church how to perform and don't have no power. I did not come in here and do something here that I won't do at home. Let me help you real good. The man that you see here the same man that I am at home. As much as you see me talking about the word here, I spend 90% of my time at home talking about the word. I got a room in my house right now. My second bedroom is a prayer room. And when you go in there, ask Brother Rodney, you get the chills going in there. Because I got a time to go shot. I got a time with God. For the past three years, every day, if I don't miss it, I'm up at three o'clock. And I'm laid out on the floor, praying before God. And when I miss it, I cry about it. Because I love my time with Him. You want to know why I'm so in tune with God? Because I spend time with God. It ain't because I'm so deep. Because I'm just like you. I'm human just like you. You piss me off and I'm going to tell you. I, look here. I'm going to tell you right now. I don't pretend. I'm not, a, I'm not a pretend saint. I will. Get in my flesh. I'm going to be honest with you. Now, I ain't going to sugarcoat it. I ain't going to tell you the devil got me. Because the devil didn't. Because listen here. Let me help you out. The devil can't make you do nothing. Let me just help you real quick. You saints that love to blame the devil. The devil didn't make you cuss that dude out at the store. You chose to cuss him out. That was your choice. That was your choice. Let me just really help you. Some of y'all think that, oh, you got to watch the devil. I ain't got to watch the devil do nothing. The devil going to be the devil whether I'm watching or not. All right, right. All right. So I don't have to watch the devil. What I need to do, though, is watch my place in God. Because watch this here. The Bible say that Jesus destroyed the works of the devil. I'm going to help y'all deep folks that's always worried about the devil. Help you real good right now. We're going to destroy a myth right now. The Bible say in the book of 1 John chapter 2 that Jesus destroyed the works of the devil. In the Greek, do you know what the word destroy means? It means to make him unemployed. It means to put the devil out of a job. So if you say for real, the devil's supposed to be in unemployment line. 
You see what I say? We're supposed to be rendered powerless. The only reason the devil beats some of us up because we give him we give him a place. But if you allow God to break you, he don't have no place. Because once I'm broken, what I used to be is no longer. So if I was a liar and God break me, hey, Baba, ba, ba, I seen the video shot and he break me, then the spirit of truth can come in. If I was a procrastinator, when God break me, I get up and I begin to move. The breaking is so you can be prepared for the new beginning. Because if God don't break you, you're just going into a new cycle of the old. And some of us cry new beginning, but we don't want to be broken. Some of us cry change, but we don't want to sacrifice. And today God says, what will you give me? What will you give me? Not what can I give you? But what will you give me? Because a lot of us, we are accustomed, we do this to God a lot. We come and our hands are like this. And that's the only way we come. We don't come to give nothing. But we come to get. And some of us are spiritual hoarders. We done hoarded and hoarded and hoarded and hoarded a move and hoarded it and hoarded a breakthrough. But God said, don't hoard no more. It's time to empty now. I want that return. I want that time now. Hold up outside. I want that time. I want it now. You say you're coming into the new. Give me that time. Hold up, Sika. Reset the And when the children of Israel, when they came before the Lord for the Moadim, and Moadim is a Hebrew word for appointed time. When they came before the Lord for those four, those three times a year. They could not come without carrying something to give. They had to bring something to God. And they had to bring the best. Stop giving God what's left over. God, I spent 20 minutes spent two hours watching TV, but now I'm going to go pray. Don't do that. In the new year, you, listen here, when you get in trouble, you don't want God to come to you like this. You don't want God to come to your rescue last, but yet we give God what's left and we call it honor. Honor is giving God the first place. But you will put it high in your motion. But when we was in the world, we would put on our best for John. You, 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 you know I'm talking good. Get your best outfit out for your love. But you come before God in your raggedy. Let's come. Let's bring God. When he, when he break us in this season, let's bring him the best. Let's bring God. Let's bring God. Because God said, God said, if you're empty today, I'll fill your storehouse again. God said, and I'll fill it till it overflows. God said, bring me your disappointment. Bring me your hurt. Bring me your frustration. 
for I am the God. Reba Baba Hasia. Resata Ramusa. Reman Sete here. I'm the God. I'm the God that brings in the harvest. I'm the God that makes all things new. Bring me it. Bring me it. Come on, bring it to me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Tiffany, God said, just he just wants you to bring it to me. God said, why you God said, why you're waiting? Because it's been a waiting season. You feel like you're waiting. 